Hi, I'm Pinguify, and if you've seen one of my videos before, you might know that I've picked up a lot of skills over the years. So, I kind of know how improvement is best done for me. However, I've gotten this comment a lot. This guy had to have done good in school. And that wasn't really true for me. I wasn't born with this mindset of trying to improve at everything, and it took even longer to apply to things that I didn't necessarily have the motivation to get better at. It was really easy with my time in O's, because I loved the game, and I had that constant motivation to keep getting better. But for high school? It didn't apply. I was still doing fairly well, but I never sought excellence. Good enough grades to be satisfied, but never looking to understand the topics at a deeper level. It was all just coercion from the education system. Because of that, I never really learned how to learn. I didn't study for anything, and I was never top of my class. For the people that watch a lot of my Twitch stream, they would get these points for watching and participating in the chat, and one of the rewards is the ability to choose a skill for me to learn. The first person to ever get enough points was this chatter named Equal. You know, like if, if, if you're a happy person, you're not going to be playing Quake and Tiff 2. <laughs> He's got a very diverse set of interests, so I really had no clue what he was going to request of me. And he chose... Geography. I can still remember in the fourth grade, while I was still trying to figure out who I was and what I prided myself on, I saw my performance in school as an important personality trait. At some point, we had to learn the locations of the continents. It was a very simple exam. You just needed to know the locations of the continents and oceans and label them on a map. When we turned it in, everyone, including myself, was talking about how easy and simple it was and how sure we all were that we'd get full credit. As the graded tests were being handed back, all my friends around me were indeed getting perfect scores. I expected much the same, but of course, the test fell on my desk, and I'd failed. 50%. My friends were laughing at my shock, and I had to go to the bathroom and cry. I don't really know why I was crying. Maybe because I saw it as an important part of my identity. Maybe just because I had never failed an exam in my life up to that point, or just the sheer embarrassment. But since then, I think I had developed a sort of disdain for rote memorization and geography as a whole. In more recent years, I had several experiences of people online being blown away at my lack of geographical knowledge, but it was just something I ended up ignoring. I always justified it to myself by saying that it's all available on Google anyway, so what's the point? But that's just an excuse for ignorance. Now, I have the opportunity to fix this gap in my knowledge. On the first day, I tried to take a quiz that listed the capitals in the order of their difficulty. Uh, Paris, Paris. UK is London. Uh, <laughs> Mexico. Mexico? What's the... What's the capital of Mexico? <laughs> and yeah, I realized that I needed some help. So I picked a multiple choice quiz to help jog my memory a little bit. So let's, let's do it, let's do it. Dili. I have never heard of this place in my life. Bangkok. Really? Greece. What? Oh no, of course, of course, of course, no. No, that's so bad. Mabob. <laughs> okay, African. What? Uh, this is the play. Don't think, feel. Okay. Well, Moldova, Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> Say it's not that one. Burundi? Oh, it was that one. Interesting. That Spain is not on the list. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. You may not believe it, but this is uh, this is truly my utmost potential. <clears throat> Belarus? I'm... Oh, no. Oh, no. Cut that from the video, please. That was so bad. How do I not know? Oh, my goodness. Burn? Jamaica. Really? Budapest. Brunei? 
Oh my gosh. That one actually hurts. Like, Canberra would be in. Libya. Really? How have I never heard of this place? Sure, why not? I finished. That's actually not bad. Honestly, I think this score is worse than it looks. I feel like if you asked me, what is the capital of X? I'd probably be able to answer 10 of them correctly. It's bad. So the question is, how do I go about fixing it? At first, my instinct was to just keep playing this quiz and gradually continue fixing these errors until I could eventually do them without having multiple choice. But then I remembered years ago when I tried to learn the periodic table. With rote memorization not being my strong point, I found this website called Quizlet. It does have basic flashcard functionality, but the reason I liked it so much is that it gamified the memorization process. I would keep doing runs and chasing high scores, and when I got the number one score on the leaderboards, I knew that I could recall any term on the list without issue. So I found this set of capitals flashcards on Quizlet. My plan from here was simple. Every day I'd learn a few letters of capitals and after a few weeks, I'd be done. On the first day, I managed to memorize all the capitals starting from A to C. I was really pleased. I even went as far as to make a post on Patreon talking about gamifying the memorization process. And I do think it's a good strategy to trick yourself into learning things that aren't as interesting to you inherently. However, with some time, I started to run into a problem. Australia's Canberra. Armenia is Tirana. Wait, what? Armenia, uh, Tirana. Albania is Yerevan. It's, it's not Yerevan? Albania. That is Yerevan. It's, uh... Oh, it's, it's Tirana. <laughs> <laughs> These were serious roadblocks, and it's something I realized I had to figure out a solution for sooner rather than later. Once I started learning more capitals, this technique of rote memorization would not last. And at this point, it became clear to me. I have to figure out how my brain works. How do I best retain information? I did one stream of this. At first, I would just go through this process of rote memorization. People watched this and were blown away at how bad I was with short-term memory. The chat was fuming because I kept making the same mistakes on terms I had just seen minutes ago. I have no initial skill for capitals or memorization. I'm terrible at it. In my 10th grade biology course, I made use of this Quizlet technique, but one term kept ruining my runs. I don't know why I couldn't remember the function of the hippocampus, but every time it came up, there was a good chance I would forget its purpose. The friend I was studying with gave me a suggestion. Try creating a mnemonic device, a memory tool that would help me recall the information. So I gave it some thought. Hippocampus. Hippopotas. Hippopotas' hidden ability is Sandstream, which summons a sandstorm when it's entered into battle. Sandstorm. And then somehow I connected sand and memory. I don't know, the sands of time or something like that. But that's it. The hippocampus is responsible for memory. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. But it's been years since I made that mnemonic device and I still remember it. And the person who challenged me to memorize all the capitals did the same thing too. All right. So how did you manage to memorize all the capitals? Because you know all of them, right? Yeah, I, I remember all of them. Um, so I create like a small story for each, uh, not everyone, but the ones that I don't know. Really? I would create okay. like a story. Uh, so I could ha give you an example. Okay. There is a country in uh, South Africa called uh, Lesotho. And the capital is uh, Maseru. Lesotho is a very mountainous country. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the way I would remember the capital would be, I would know that it's a mountainous country. And then I would see myself as a giant walking through the country. <laughs> and then I would get a foot massage by the mountains. Because I'm walking uh, through a very mountainous country. Now, it's good that it's ridiculous because ridiculous stories are easier to remember. Right, right. And the word for massage in Swedish is masera. Hmm. Uh, so it's very similar to the to the word of the capital, and that way I would remember it. So moving forward, I made these mnemonic devices for all of the capitals. That might sound like extra work, but after I sat down and gave individual attention to each of these terms, I didn't even have to go through the repetition of trying over and over to force it into memory. I could immediately go to the minigame and get 
pretty much all of them right. On that Patreon post where I showed off my completion of Capitals A to C, someone left a strange comment. I didn't know what to think of it at first. This person had donated to me a month ago, and just so happened to have his entire page dedicated to nomology. It is a crazy coincidence, and the comment he left was extremely dense. But it did mention two ideas that ended up coming back to a lot. Space repetition and the memory palace. Space repetition is used by services like Anki, and I'd definitely look into it if you're trying to retain new information for as long as possible. So Anki is like crack for medical students. <laughs> like we but I want to focus on the stranger one, the memory palace. The idea is to visualize a familiar location in your mind and place the objects you're trying to remember inside of it. It sounds crazy, but I did try using this technique for nine of the countries, and I can still walk through a version of my house with all of the objects in it. I walk in the garage, have my blue Honda Civic, I open the door, have a nice pair of Gucci slides, because the capital of Honduras is Tegucigalpa. Go to the kitchen, we have Mushishi, who's extremely hungry and therefore is making pesto pasta while also floating in the air in the style of Buddha. And then there's a porta potty blocking the front door, which is Haiti, obviously. I'd guess that its effectiveness depends on your visual memory, but someone who mastered the technique memorized the order of 5,040 binary digits in just 30 minutes. This technique is extremely powerful. But the reason I didn't end up using it excessively was because I couldn't just place a notable landmark inside the memory palace or something like that. I just didn't know enough about the countries and capitals to begin with. But I think there's something to be said that I can still remember all of the elements of my memory palace. If your goal is to memorize a grouping of terms, I think it's something you should definitely give a try. The people who use it say they can visit their memory palaces at any time, regardless of how many they have, but unfortunately, I didn't use the technique enough to confirm or deny that. Another person in the comments recommended that a great way to learn the capitals is to just spend time with each of them and read about the locations. He said it was like going on a mini vacation to each of these places. I gave it a go for a few of the locations, but they didn't really stick. I realize it's because, I'm sorry, I just don't have that much interest in foreign culture or history. And trying to use those elements to learn didn't work nearly as well for me. So after trying everything, I found that I best learn through these techniques. I talk to myself like a maniac. I've heard some people retain information better when they write it down, but I've always worked well talking to myself. I've also always enjoyed wordplay and words in general, so naturally I retain information better creating these mnemonic devices with wordplay. It's usually pretty ridiculous, but hey, it works. Take practice quizzes. In the context of education, it'll help you improve at your actual test taking skills, but for memorization as a whole, getting the wrong answer and learning the correct one afterwards seem to help the information stick more than just being told the correct one and trying to commit that to memory. And lastly, breaking up the learning process into only a few capitals at a time and gamifying the whole thing worked very well for me. It gave me goals that were achievable in the short term instead of just trying to take on the whole thing in one shot. But I wish that I knew all of these things about myself back when I was still in school. I would have done better on exams, I would have been able to spend less time studying when I actually had to, I could retain information for longer periods of time, and it would be easier to learn new things. It kind of comes back to the idea of the types of learners. You can have a general idea of which one you are, but actually knowing what techniques to use is the hard part, and something that will only come with time and effort. If you're still in school and you can't find it within yourself to study for anything, Try out something like I did. I thought studying was boring and awful, but I really think it came down to the way that I studied that made me so unable to sit down and grind out that memorization. Figuring out how your brain works is such a valuable piece of information for improvement as a whole. Not everyone's going to respond the same way to the same techniques. Everyone's going to learn a little differently, and you've got to figure that out for yourself. But when I finished learning all of them, this is what happened. Come on, dude. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You know, regression before progression. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Ecuador. Door. Keto. Kuwait. Kuwait! Starting heart and soul. Oh my goodness. This is so bad, man. One more. One more. Silence. Radio silence. I try so hard this one. 
Latvia, Riga. Guinea is a Conakry. Nepal is Kathmandu. Yo, 185. This is potentially number one spot. Micronesia, Palakir. Tuvalu, Funafuti. Finland, Helsinki. 234k. We can do this. Ghana, Ghana, Accra. Belgium, Brussels. Netherlands, Amsterdam. Cote d'Ivoire, Yamos. Sucro. We can lift another, another day. Mongolia, Ulan, Batar. I don't want to type that one ever. <laughs> I think 260 is like num num top three for sure. Singapore. Kenya, Nairobi. The Netherlands. Switzerland. We're living. World record run. St. Kitts and Nevis. Papua New Guinea. Vanuatu. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Benin, 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 Porto, Porto, Novo, Brazil, Somalia. What's Somalia? Somalia is Mogadishu. I'm gonna live again. Dude, this is a crazy run. Macedonia, Skopje. I, all of them are gonna be red. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So I just need to focus on those, snipe them out. Granada, uh, St. George's, Kuwait, Armenia, uh, Comoros, Moroni. You're fine, you're fine. I'm gonna live. I just need to do this. My repo. Oh! Oh! Level 15, boys. Level 15. We're flying. Serena, Paramaribo. Castries. Trinidad is Port of Spain. Okay, I can do this. Port. Port. Of. Spain. Sniper man. Belize, Bumblepan. And Samoa is, uh, Apia. 77. Belmo. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down, calm down. I can still type Belmo Pan. <laughs> oh, it's getting rough, boys. Hold it. No! That's the end. Well, I still destroyed these nerds. Look at that. Look at this absolute decimation. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, okay. I mean, what can you say? This was my goal. I, I was going to do it on stream, but I just, I just kind of did it, you know? Not bad. I honestly wasn't expecting to take the number one spot by that margin, but I want to remind you, I was unbelievably bad at memorization and knowledge of the capitals to begin with. People made fun of me and were shocked at how bad I was, but your starting skill level does not matter at all. If you are the worst FPS player you know, and everyone you play with is getting better faster than you, ignore them. Focus on yourself before you worry about what anyone else is doing or thinks of you. You won't get anywhere obsessing about how bad you are compared to everyone else. You have to accept your weaknesses and flaws before you can get to work on making them your strengths. Because all that matters is how good you can get, which is almost always going to be limited by your practice and mindset before your inherent skill. Years ago, I was so bad at shooters on PC that I actually quit for a few months. But no one sees that. They only care about my current skill after I put thousands of hours into practicing these games. So if you can't play a single note on violin, or you've got horrible grades in school, put in some effort. Learn how you most effectively practice, and I think you'll surprise yourself with what you can achieve. Thanks for watching. I also want to give a quick shout out to my lovely patrons on Patreon. I know I said last time that I didn't want to have a two month gap between videos, but this project was a little bit bigger than I anticipated, and I'm still trying to find a balance between streaming and doing YouTube. Regardless, this time I do actually have four video ideas in the works for the near future. If you want to be kept up with my progress, I talk about it all the time in my sub channel my Discord, and I'll keep making more of these nerd essays on Patreon. And of course, the obligatory plug for my Twitch stream. I still love interacting directly with the community, begin viewer interviews. Right, like everybody seems to struggle with finding what they love doing, right? But nobody seems to talk about, uh, you know, burning out of, of doing what you love. Playing games, right? Excalibur, clad in shimmering Samite. Oh, it's just a lover. <laughs> or just rambling over stuff in general. No one else has, has gotten a pink box. Okay, the reason I ask, because I, uh, I got some some skincare stuff, which is traditionally for women. I got a body wash, uh, which is traditionally for women, and I got a woman's arm sleeve for what I'm using it for right now. And they sent me a pink box. <laughs> I was highly confused. 
Again, thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you around.